Israel is the third largest nuclear nation in the world. She's got about 400 hydrogen bombs, which will, she will neither confirm nor deny in her arrogance. And she has not signed the Non-Proliferation Treaty in her arrogance. So why shouldn't Iran have nuclear weapons or any other countries in the Middle East? Because she set the example as America has done. Okay? Now, PSR, Physicians for Social Responsibility, did a study whereby they dropped three hydrogen bombs on two uranium facilities because they're buried so deeply and you can't destroy them just with conventional weapons at Nahantz and Isfahan, and released so much radiation, uranium, which is causing cancers in Basra now and in Fallujah, uh, and gross birth deformities. And the radiation from the nuclear weapons produced so much fallout that within 48 hours, 2.6 million people died, all the way over to Afghanistan, India and Pakistan. And Israel would get it too. Yet those medical consequences are never discussed. Isn't that interesting? They talk about, you know, they've got them and we haven't, or what about this and that. They don't ever talk about what happens during war. Similarly, when America went into Iraq, a million civilians have been killed, half of whom are children. There are three million refugees. And yet the government talks about how many Americans get killed. Are Americans more valuable than children in Iraq or Iran? Children? I remember when Chernobyl happened, I was on the ABC on a radio program and I was in some airport out in the Midwest and this man said to me, but they're, they're Russians, they're communists. I said, they're people, I'm a physician. I couldn't understand that attitude. Um, it's important to know that America is in the process of weaponizing space. There's a book here that I co-wrote called War in Heaven. Boeing, uh, Lockheed Martin, Ra um, Raytheon, uh, Northrop Grumman are weaponizing space with your money. And they're going to fight war from space down to earth and quotes affect very many kills. And it's happening right now. And they probably put nuclear reactors up there. This is insanity. America's putting anti-missile bases right up to the border of Russia in Poland and Czechoslovakia. It's really making the Russians cross. How would you feel if they put anti-missile bases right up next to your border in Canada? You wouldn't like it and your politicians wouldn't stand for it. So the Russians are getting very annoyed with America and they may not sign or look after the new uh, START treaty and they, may, they, they say they're going to build more nuclear weapons. Oh well, so what's new? This is real insanity. Um, a nuclear war, I want you to know how a nuclear war, America's got a policy to fight and win a nuclear war and I'll walk you through it quickly. How do you win a nuclear war? Well, you knit all your towns and cities with a population of, uh, oh, I've got a big bruise on my arm, but you'll have to just watch it. <laughs> um, all your towns and cities with a population of 50,000 or more are targeted with at least one bomb. Washington, D.C. with 60. One bomb dropping on New York would vaporise everyone out to five miles radius. Turn them into gas, like the little boy in Hiroshima who left his shadow on the pavement. He's in the museum. 20 miles out, everyone is lethally burnt. And the whole area engulfed in a firestorm of 3,000 square miles. And as the fires coalesce across America, America will burn north to south, east to west, even in the middle of winter. And as the fires burn the cities, a huge cloud of toxic radioactive smoke rises into the stratosphere, circling the earth with a cloud so thick it blocks out the sun for about five to ten years, causing a short ice age, and everything and everyone will freeze to death in the dark. And it could happen tonight. I don't know if your NPR stations still have, you're listening to the music and suddenly hear, ooh, and a voice says, male, we are just testing the emergency broadcasting system. Is that still on? Yeah. Well, this time they would say, we are under a nuclear attack. You've got 10 minutes to reach the nearest fallout shelter. Not that it'll do you any good. And we get close to nuclear war many times a year. 
Yeltsin got to within 10 seconds of pressing a button. 10 seconds. That's how we're still here. I don't actually know how we are still here. Now, there's an article about cyber warfare that people are hacking in to the Pentagon over a 1,000 attacks a year and they're hacking into the early warning system. You know, a young 15-year-old boy whose frontal lobes aren't well developed because they take a while to develop in young men, and I've got a grandson that's at that age. He's almost in communicate... Com I can't communicate with him. Um, they're brilliant, some of these kids. They could hack into the early warning system and blow the earth up for fun. So we are in a very invidious situation. So how do you win a nuclear war? Well, first of all, Mo America will target Moscow and decapitate Putin so he can't press his button. Decapitate is a word used by the Pentagon. And then you will send all your weapons over two bombs per missile silo in Russia to knock out their missiles because they're very buried very deep. Now, the Russians don't want to lose their missiles before they launch them. So they have dug a great big hole in the Ural Mountains where they've got a missile called the Dead Hand. And if they see your... They, if they know that Moscow's been taken out and they see your missiles coming by their satellites, they launch the Dead Hand with radio control which launch all, launches all their missiles without human input by computer. Now, that could go off accidentally. There are lots of ways a nuclear war could start. Um, so it's imperative that you rise up as one, turn into Johns and Jones of Ark, climb on your white steeds, ride across America and get rid of these bloody things. <laughs> and the whole world... The whole world will thank you. The whole world will thank you. So we can fix nuclear weapons, we can fix nuclear war, and we can pr provide abolition of nuclear weapons. If Russia and America abolish their weapons, Israel will be forced to. Pakistan and India, which could go to nuclear war any day or any time, would be forced to get rid of their weapons. And then you have the moral authority. America has no moral authority at the moment at all. Now... <coughs> um, before I finish, I just want to say, because people say, well, if we don't have nuclear power, what are we going to do? I commissioned a study three years ago by a wonderful man called Arjun Makajani called Carbon Free, Nuclear Free. And the truth is, this is a very intense and intelligent and technological study. There's enough c renewable energy now to supply the whole country with renewable energy. Why isn't every house in California covered with a solar panel? Why? Well, you tell me. Why? What? Yeah, but it's you. You've got to stop being passive. And sitting at your Facebook all day will do nothing. The Occupy movement has been good, but you've got to be very creative now. And you need a solar hot water system on your house. And you need solar panels on all the parking lots. And you import electric cars from China. You plug them into the solar system on the parking lot, power them up, drive them home and then plug them into your house and recharge your house. I mean, it's all simple. It's all in this. There's enough wind west of the Mississippi to supply the whole country with three times the amount of electricity you currently use. Well, you have to upgrade the grid. Well, guess what? That would provide thousands or hundreds of thousands of jobs and elevate the GDP like the New Deal with, a, with Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Huh? Geothermal energy, it's available any time. You waste 28% of the electricity you use. Waste by leaving all the lights on. You must not leave your lights on because it's global warming. You're killing the planet or producing nuclear waste which will produce epidemics of cancer, leukaemia and genetic disease for the rest of time. You must turn your lights off. Turn off your computers, your DVDs, all those flashing lights. Don't use clothes dryers, for God's sake. GE makes good things for life, like clothes dryers, irons, refrigerators, nuclear power plants, nuclear missiles and nuclear bombs. Hang your clothes outside. Ooh, but Mrs Brown might see your underpants. Ooh, or your brassiers. Ooh, 
There are laws in certain states that forbid you to hang your clothes. That's ridiculous. Hang them out and dry them with a nuclear reactor in the sky. If it's cold in the winter, well, it's not really cold in California. We've always dried our clothes outside in Australia. Dry them in the cellar beside the furnace. Nuclear power produces 20% of the electricity you use, so you don't need nuclear power plants anyway. Hmm? Japan had 54 reactors, only two are operating. They're not dying. Well, they'll be dying of cancer, but they're not dying from lack of electricity. They might be sweating a bit in the summer. Ooh, but you mustn't be too hot in the summer. That's what we've got sweat glands for. The latent heat of vaporisation dries us. Okay, and you probably don't need too much heat in the winter here. You can't live like jellos the whole year at the same temperature. It's not appropriate. You need to sweat and you need to cover yourself with more clothes when it's cold, particularly in California. In other words, we have to save the planet. And this is a wonderful study and I really recommend it. So when my, I sign my books, you can see, you can download it from ieer.org. And uh, it's, it's like Archimedes. I read it when I was in the bath. I got so excited, I nearly jumped out and fled down naked. Yeah, down the street like Archimedes did when he developed his principle. <laughs> now, there's another book here called If You Love This Planet. And this is about global warming, toxic pollution, where you live in a chemical cocktail of 80,000 chemicals all the time, you know. You mustn't ever drink water out of plastic bottles. It's got hormone mimickers in it, phthalates and BPA which is causing uh, increased breast cancer, probably stimulating breast cancer cells, stimulating prostate cancer cells, and causing early menarche in little girls who are developing uh, breast buds at the age of four or five. That's what we think in paediatrics. Uh, deforestation, uh, overpopulation, we've got too many people and we've got to stop having babies. And these stupid Republicans, I don't know what they're on about, but they are fascinated with women's genita genital tracts. I mean, I, <laughs> well, why don't we look at some male genital tracts? I mean, I, it's really, really strange to me. I don't understand. But they really, we really need to be looking at the fact that one, 200 years ago there were 1 billion people and now there are 7 billion. We're increasing exponentially and past the carrying capa capacity of the planet. Then I go into the media and Rupert Murdoch and all sorts of things, why and how and how we can fix the planet. So that's an interesting book, I think, and it's just been revised. But I want to show you one other thing. If you fly over the Dakotas and you look down from the plane, you can see these round circles connected by a sort of cobweb of roads. They're the missile silos, and in each missile silo is one missile with three hydrogen bombs and two men aged 18 to 21, yes sir, no sir, press the button sir, each armed with a pistol, one to shoot the other if one shows signs of deviant behaviour. <laughs> the locks are 12 feet apart, so one man can't turn both locks, but they worked out if you tie a string to one key, one man can turn both locks. Um, so there are many missiles and many hydrogen bombs in those silos, which is really scary. And now I want to show you something else. You've got 14 Trident submarines that silently coast around the oceans ready to launch missiles at Russia or China because you've targeted China since the Cold War ended. In each Trident submarine are 24 missiles and on each missile are eight hydrogen bombs. Eight. So I'm going to try, show you a Trident submarine, but you multiply this by 14. And it's true that a commander of a Trident, if he gets his 2IC to agree, could launch his payload without communicating with the Pentagon. Hmm? So let's show you a Trident submarine. Can you believe that? And you've got 14 of the things. And Romney wants to build more because you don't have enough. This is called nuclear psychosis and it's time it ended and the opportunity is now because you're friends with Russia and now you must do it. I'm 73, I could die soon, I'm passing the torch to you, I'm mentoring you and if you don't do it I'm not coming back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>